I talk about food and taste. I say I work for food and taste. And when that doesn't work, I say I talk about colors, the different colors in a market. And I know everybody loves to go to a market, in a fresh vegetable market, fresh food market to buy food. And that's where I take the conversation. There has to be a very good reason why so many countries want to be part of this particular commission. There are two reasons. One, this is the only place on earth where you can go and talk about things which you practically don't see, but you need all the time when you are talking about agriculture and food. That is the seeds and the diversity of seeds. Doesn't matter whether it is animals, plants, fishes, so on. So this is one of the most important aspects of the work. And people around the world, the member countries, their technical people recognize that importance. This is the most important achievement, the recognition of the importance of genetic diversity. Although it is known, it's still not that well known in terms of, let's say, in comparison to many other natural resources, the water, the land, the air, and so forth because many times genetic resources are taken for given, that it is always there. That there is an issue about exchange, about access, about availability, about resources, of all things related to genetic resources is the most important strategic issue that the Commission has managed to raise and withhold and uphold, not withhold, uphold against all odds. This is one, the single most important achievement of the Commission and its members. Of course, in doing that, it has established some extraordinarily important milestones. One of them indeed is the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, in which I participated uh, very strongly in, in facilitating that, so I'm very happy about that. And there have been the global plans of actions, both on animal and plant genetic resources, and this sheer enthusiasm to carry forward against all odds is the single most achievement of uh, the Commission, I think. As FAO, we are in a state of transformational changes right now, and this very much ties in with some of the global economic and political changes that we are seeing around the world. So, it is indeed a good time for Commission to revisit its priorities, particularly in light of these challenges that we are facing, whether it is climate change, genetic erosion, genetic vulnerability, or urbanization. I think one of the biggest priorities for the Commission would be to reposition itself in light of these changes. How does it become much more effective and influential in in terms of these global changes that are happening. Is it ready to take on these new factors that are coming in and how to shape it in building the, the Commission's future pathways and chart the working map, work map uh, for the future. The reason I say this is because while we do work a lot, much of the time it is unrecognized that the plant genetic resources and genetic resources broadly are what is at the basis of all this loss, the biodiversity loss, the food loss, the loss in good nutrition, the loss in accessible material. This is all there at the base of it. So if we don't keep it in the fields, in the farmer's fields, if we don't maintain it so that it is available when it has to be used, then all these changes that are happening along with it, we are going to simply lose whatever little we have left.